This is the third installment of our four part video series on effective study habits. In this video, we will cover time management skills and how you can make the best use of your time. Now, time is the only commodity which is equally distributed among all of us. No matter whether you are the most powerful person or the least powerful person, whether you are rich, poor, we all get 24 hours every day. And how effectively we use these 24 hours determine our future. So time management is really, really important. So what are some of the most effective ways of managing our time? Number one, make a schedule for the next day before going to bed. I know, we all make a study schedule every week. And the very next day or two, that timetable is found in the dustbin. And then we feel guilty for not being able to follow the study schedule. And then to avoid the feeling of guilt, we stop making study schedule, right? Have you ever thought why you are not able to follow your own study schedule that you yourself have made? The answer is, there are some problems with how we generally create our study schedule. If you look carefully at your earlier study schedules or timetable, you will observe that that study schedule is very tightly packed. You start your study schedule early in the morning until late in the night with 15, 16 hours of total study plan in a day with very little break in between, right? This is the main reason of our failure to achieve our daily study goals. You create a study schedule that is hard to achieve unless you are a superman. If you look at the interviews of toppers in various competitive exams, you will find that they often accept that they study for 7 to 10 hours regularly every day. So while making your study schedule or timetable, make sure you set reasonable goals that you can achieve. So you can start with 5 to 10 hours of study, or not 10, I would say 5 to 8 hours of study schedule. And then as you gain more confidence, you can increase these hours. But in the beginning, keep it a reasonable goal so that you can comfortably easily achieve those goals. Also, give yourself appropriate time to relax and recharge yourself between the study schedule. Take regular study breaks. Research studies have shown that our capacity to learn decreases if we do not take regular breaks during our study. So take 10 to 15 minutes of break after every one and one and a half hours of study. So make sure you do that. Now let's talk about how to develop an effective study schedule. The first thing is be specific. So when you make your study schedule, your study task should be very specific. Generally, when we make our study schedule, it's like, okay, uh, from 8 to 10 in the morning, I will study social science. From 10 to 11, I will study English. Problem with this type of goal is it is not specific. Social science is a broad goal. English is a broad goal. So when you make your study schedule, make sure you make it very specific, such as from 8 to 10, I will cover chapter 1, part 1. So this goal is more specific. Or I will study English grammar, chapter 1, and I will cover the noun section in chapter 1. So when you make your study schedule for the next day, keep it very specific. What exactly you want to achieve in those hours? The next important thing is your goal or study task should be should be measurable. When uh, whatever task you set for the next day, you should ask yourself, how will I measure my performance if I really completed that task? If your goal is very specific, it becomes easy to measure if you completed that task successfully or not. So find some ways to measure your performance by the end of the day. The third important point regarding uh, study schedule is it should be attainable. We already talked about it, uh, that you should set your study goals based on your capacity. If you have a capacity for studying for five hours, do not set a goal for eight hours in the beginning. Yes, you can gradually improve your capacity and improve your timing, but be aware of your capacity and set goals accordingly. So let me summarize it. When you develop your study schedule, keep in mind three things. Your study sh task should be very specific, you should find a way to measure your performance and your study schedule should be according to your current capacity or strength. Now let's talk about our other effective ways of managing our time. Another challenge that doesn't let, let us complete our scheduled goal is our inability to say no. Some of us have this issue of not being able to say no when you really mean it. For example, sometimes you have a task to do and then your friends ask you to play cricket, football or anything. And then you think if I say no, my friends will be hurt or they will be angry. Guys, 
it's your career and your true friend will understand that it's important for you for you to study so learn to say no when you have scheduled a task in your timetable yeah sometimes we have emergency situations so we can postpone our task because it's emergency such as someone needs to go to doctor or hospital like that so when you mean to say no say it don't hide it now the next thing is do not do multitasking when you are completing your study task, just do one thing at a time. Some student put radio on while studying. I do not recommend it. Just focus on one task at a time. Otherwise, you'll be, it will be difficult to finish your task within the time limit that you have set for yourself. One of the most important thing about time management is overcoming procrastination. This is our enemy number one, which seduces us to postpone our task for tomorrow and doesn't let us complete our study schedule. Guys, we all have experienced it. I have named this enemy as the Trojan horse. Why? If you remember this story, the Trojan horse is a tale from the Trojan War about the subterfuge that the Greeks used to enter the city of Troy and end the conflict. After a fruitless 10-year siege, the Greeks constructed a huge wooden horse and hide a select force of men inside. The Greeks pretended to sail away and the Trojans pulled the horse into their city as a victory trophy. That night, the Greek force crept out of the horse and opened the gate for the rest of the Greek army which had sailed back under the cover of night. The Greeks entered and destroyed the city of Troy, decisively ending the war. So the horse was a deception. So that's why I named it as a Trojan horse. Procrastination is something that is very, very deceptive. It comes to us and tells us, okay, you have enough time, you know, you can do this task tomorrow. There is still, you know, this task is due next month, so you can still go out and play. So that's how it tries to lure you to postpone your task for tomorrow or for other day. Do not listen to the Trojan hearts. Be aware of it. Another important thing, thing about uh, time management is put the hard things first or do the hard thing first in the day. So let's say you don't like maths and it's hard for you. So when you make your study schedule for the next day, put maths first on your study schedule. And the reason why I'm recommending it that your mind is fresh in the beginning and you can handle tough tasks better if you do it first. So put the hard thing first in your study schedule and make sure you do it first. Now, the other important thing about uh, time management is finding somebody who can play uh, the role of an accountability partner. So you can find your friend or anybody who can hold you accountable for whatever task or whatever studies um, schedule you are making for yourself and how it works. You can uh, you can send your study schedule a night before to, to your uh, accountability partner. And the next day, the accountability partner will call you and will ask you, you know, how much you are able to finish your study schedule. And if not, then why not? So you find somebody who can make you held uh, responsible, accountable to whatever study schedule you are, you are making. And you can play the same role for that person also. So it's good to have maybe your friend who can play. Both of you can play accountability partner partner for each other and the reason why I recommend it when you have somebody who is going to ask you about some task or something there is a more uh, you know probability that you will finish your task because nobody wants to say at the end of the day to someone that you know I was not able to finish this task so this technique really works and I highly recommend it find an account accountability partner for yourself and the last point I want to emphasize uh, here is you need to learn to reward yourself. Sometimes we are hard on ourselves, we set high goals and sometimes we achieve, sometimes we don't. And we rarely think about rewarding ourselves. So my recommendation is if you set a goal, maybe monthly, weekly goal, and if you achieve that, Reward yourself. Do the things that you love doing. Go out, watch a movie, go to a restaurant, have fun. Just try to reward yourself because you did something that that you set your goal for. And this really enhances, not enhances, but kind of reinforce your future behaviors. So there is a strong possibility that you will, if you reward yourself, then in future you will keep achieving your goals because you think after you are done with that you will find you will go watch a movie or some kind of reward so i'm i don't mean to have some monetary reward it's more about uh, the things that you cherish the things that you the things that you love so try to reward yourself in some way after you complete your schedule study schedule or your weekly 
goals. All right, so these are the things I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope some of the things I discussed you will implement and see for yourself if it, if it is really helpful or not. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and bye.